Hello, buddies. Good evening, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm uh, with Tom T-Bird. You might have seen him before on this uh, channel, but not for a while. Uh, we are photographing, we hope to photograph the Great Rift, but as you see, we have a lot of clouds. But what's more interesting, just as we uh, tried uh, uh, recording and doing some tests, we saw Starlink there. So I think you can see just, I think, to my right for you, we have the Starlink uh, train coming over, so it's a bizarre sight. So we might enjoy that for a little bit and check for some compositions and uh, hope that it will get a little bit more clear. Let's go. Bizarre. Time to set up. I decided to go for single exposures only. The amount of cloud cover would probably make a Star Trekker useless tonight anyway. So tonight we are photographing or we are trying to photograph the Great Rift region of the Milky Way. And the Great Rift region is not as bright as the core region of the Milky Way, which everybody knows, but I think it's a shame that everybody just stops photographing uh, the Milky Way when the core season is over. Um, the Great Rift region sits right on top, as I said, and there uh, goes a really nice, dark, contrasty dust cloud of interstellar dust right through it, which gives it uh, yeah, a really nice, poppy, Kind of, yeah, how do, how do you say it? It's, it's just nice. <laughs> so yeah, we are hoping that the, that the clouds will clear. We just looked at our um, weather forecast, our uh, cloud radar, and yeah, we might be lucky, but I'm not totally sure. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, as always. Accompanied by the clouds, we started to fool around a bit and kept hoping for some clearings. <laughs> so why are we using these red lights all the time you know these weird looking red lights like it's a red light district or something no uh, it has all the <laughs> you might be wondering why are we using these red headlights all the time well it has all to do with the human night vision you know our eyes are not very sensitive and that means we need to get used to the dark so uh, if you uh, I challenge you to try it if you are out in a dark place try not to look for 15 to 20 minutes to a light source and uh, after that I guarantee you you will see two times as more stars, or maybe not two times, but much more stars than you used to before. And uh, red light has somehow the ability to not interfere with your night vision. So that's excellent because uh, we can see a little bit in the dark, we can operate our cameras and uh, our night vision will uh, still be intact. So uh, that's the reason why we are using red lights all the time. And uh, yeah, after that we just look uh, to a bright LCD screen. But crazy photographers. <laughs> and then on the distant horizon we saw some clear patches of sky arriving. Now, uh, we will have uh, a moon rising uh, in about 10 minutes. Uh, the moon will rise in the uh, northeast <laughs> and that's exactly opposite uh, to the site we are shooting at. We are shooting to the southwest and uh, yeah I think we might get away uh, to shoot the Milky Way uh, um, yeah about until half an hour after moonrise. Uh, as you can see maybe behind me uh, we are getting a clear gap so uh, we hope after about one and a half hours of waiting that we will still be able to shoot the Milky Way above the uh, sheep shed. <laughs> While uh, the clouds are clearing on the horizon or the sky is clearing on the horizon Tom is uh, preparing his camera looking for a new composition. What uh, kind of settings will you use, Tom? I'm not really sure. Um, now I have 20 seconds and an ISO of 3200. Uh -huh. F2.8. So uh, it gives me quite a bright image at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the clouds are reflecting on the light pollution, I think. Yeah, 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 indeed. All but, right. Well, that's, we have to deal with that right now, but it is what it is. It is indeed. It is. Well, let's see what we get in about 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, let's hope so. So we've had a very brief moment of, uh, yeah, 
it isn't even clear sky. It was just a really small gap between the clouds. And uh, yeah, the Milky Way was visible, the Great Rift. It's uh, positioned exactly above the shed. But uh, yeah, we've uh, managed only to do two or three 15 second shots, I think. And uh, then the clouds were back. So uh, this might be everything for tonight. This might not even end up in a vlog, but uh, hey, we're out again under some stars in the cold, in the wind on a Friday night. I could also be at home, warm inside, drinking a beer, but you know, <laughs> anyway, still enjoying ourselves. <laughs> Let's see what we get later tonight. So we patiently waited, and waited, and waited. Well, it's uh, not getting any better actually. We have some gaps between the clouds. Sometimes we can uh, yeah, make out some star constellations. Uh, yeah, but it's not enough uh, to get the Great Rift. Certainly not enough to win, uh, to win a uh, What's in the Night Sky, because uh, Corne and now also Martijn have won a What's in the Night Sky challenge from Ellen Wallace and not me, so uh, that was actually the whole goal of tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, besides joking around, we realized those award-winning shots were not going to happen tonight. I was not ready to give up though and came back a couple of days later. Here's what happened. Good evening, as you can see we are back. It's now three days later. Tom has also arrived. You might see some really bright lights, that's because the military is practicing there. Fireworks. <laughs> talk about light pollution but hey it's not constant it's pretty irritating but hey our plan is uh, after yeah, too much clouds um, we are hoping that the clouds will be clearing just a little bit uh, the forecast said there will be a little gap between the clouds and we hope we can still make a better shot of the sheep shed we are now standing uh, 50 meters in front of the uh, sheep shed uh, with the ID uh, to do a tracked shot, Tom is doing a uh, sky stack and then we'll combine it um, uh, with our foreground shot. And maybe if the skies remain clear, I'll also do a normal regular stack with the sheep shed all in the frame. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. But uh, we are persevering here. <laughs> so uh, let's go. Yes, so just right at the moment when astro darkness is kicking in, the gap is coming over. So uh, my uh, tracker is uh, already shooting, still shooting, I have to say. And uh, I think this could work. Tom is working on his uh, new vlog format, so I'll also check him out if that works. But hey, uh, in the meantime, I'll double check my settings now and uh, let's shoot the Great Rift. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, we will get some aurora tonight. I was out yesterday and I uh, caught a little bit of uh, aurora at the windmill. Didn't vlog, only a little bit of footage, but uh, I'll pop the shot up now. But uh, yeah, it could be that it will happen again tonight. So, pretty exciting. <laughs> So uh, behind me, I think you can see uh, some pretty nice uh, stretches of uh, clear skies, finally again. And I kind of need it because I did a whole stack of about 20-25 minutes on ISO uh, <clears throat> too high. <laughs> I know some of you are going to laugh and uh, rightfully so. So uh, right now my tracker is running again, uh, getting this uh, stretch of sky. And um, yeah, I also done uh, a separate foreground which looked uh, pretty good. Um, Tom is now doing a bit of vlogging, a bit of light painting and... Um, yeah, so far so good. I think uh, we can definitely come away with a pretty good shot tonight. So, uh, perseverance, perseverance. Keep on trying. This evening is all about trying again, trying again, trying again. Perseverance. So, uh, three days ago we were here also, uh, Tom and me, and uh, we tried to shoot the Great Rift. It didn't work out quite well. I wasn't really happy with the shot. Tom was quite happy, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was. But hey, everybody has its uh, own uh, standards. You're a perfectionist, <laughs> you're a perfectionist. <laughs> no, it, it, it looked pretty cool, but I knew it could be better. So yeah. tonight, uh, yeah, we knew, uh, we knew the region, we knew exactly where to go. So I was just keeping an eye out on the, uh, on the forecast. And when the live radar said there was probably going to be a small gap in the clouds, uh, I just popped in my car, knew exactly where to go, uh, put up my tracker, made some shots. And uh, I think they turned out pretty well. How did it go with you, Tom? 
I hope quite well. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. I, I did some stacking, stack shot as well. So I made uh, yeah. 15 uh, shots uh, around 15 seconds. Of only the sky? Of only the sky. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, to try and stack them in editing. Yeah. And I did some separate shooting of the foreground. I'm going to blend them. Uh -huh. But I also did some single shots. So let's see uh, which one turns out best. Yeah, I'm also really curious. I think he's going to be surprised how his uh, stacked sky shots will turn out compared to single shots. Because the big advantage, I think, uh, with uh, if you shoot your sky separately from your foreground is that you can also process your sky separately for your foreground. So you can uh, do a starless edit and I think you can get much more detail out of the Milky Way than a single shot. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, is some people uh, say it is not real, but hey, I think if you just know for sure that the Milky Way will be in the right position uh, as we know uh, right now, I think it is a realistic enough shot on the same location on the same night. Yeah. So, uh, but hey, everybody has his preferences, which is of course okay. So uh, yeah, if our shots turn out to be any good, here are our shots. And for now, I thank you guys again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.